Hello, today we're going to be covering the ENET meter and the AOI that goes along with that for RS Logix 5000, either for the Control Logix or for the Compact Logix PLCs. So we're going to start in the Netalytics software. The light version is all you need for this setup because you're not going to be viewing the data in the uh, ENET meter, uh, sorry, in the Netalytics, but you're going to be viewing it in the RS Logix controller tags. So, uh, so I'm going to just browse the uh, network to find the ENET meter. Make sure that your adapter and your PC is obviously in the same subnet as your um, as your ENET meter is. So now it's found it here. We say open selected ENET meters, and then finished. So now we can expand out the uh, the ENET meter here, and <clears throat> we can choose to uh, reset the the data here. Sometimes. When you first start up, there's some uh, data that's um, odd or strange, so it's best to just do a reset when you first are starting up the init meter so it can start fresh. So now from here, the configure areas where you may want to go to do any sort of configuration. So setting your IP address, your subnet mask, uh, default gateway address if needed, and then you can also update from, where, from within this screen. The other thing that you uh, may want to do while you're in the, the light version is set some of your uh, limits. For instance, the limits are what determines whether a level is going to flag a warning or a fault. And that's where this, is, this would be set in here. So, um, so the limits are on a node by node basis aside from the power data. And so you would select the nodes that you have on the network and then you can then uh, change the limits in here by unlocking them and then uh, um, and then editing them as you desire. In most cases you would just leave them at the default so we're going to move on from here then and go into the RS Logix 5000. So in this case we're actually in Logix Designer which is the uh, Studio 5000 version, so version uh, for version 20 and 21 processors. And uh, all you need to do here is, so we've got our main project and in this case I'm going to leave it in the main, but if you want to slow down the rate at which the ENET meter is being requested, uh, the data from the ENET meter, um, then what you would do is you could put it in a, uh, another task, another program, and set that to periodic and then set that to periodic task to happen at the rate at which you want to pull the data from the ENET meter. So you just right click on the, the logic or ladder line wherever you want to insert the rungs or the add-on instruction. And in a minute here, there we go. So we're going to select the ENET meter AOI L5X file and select import. So it's going to go through its process of importing that. And then we just say OK to these, uh, to, to the defaults here. And now we have our ENET meter AOI on the rung in our logic. So one thing that needs to be done, and really the only thing to at least get the AOI started and active, is set up the communications path. So in here, in my case, I have a compact logix. So I would put two for the Ethernet port and 192.168.1.200, which is where my ENET meter is at. That's the IP address of my ENET meter. I just say OK to that, and then I can uh, go online and download. So you'll see here down the right hand side as this is loading that there's multiple messages, message instructions that are part of this AOI. So you notice that we only went into the very first one to update the path. And uh, so now we're just going to say yes to run, go back to run mode. And so what happens is you entered in the first one, but then the AOI itself copies that path to all of these messages so that it's, it's reading from the same ENET meter and you don't have to manually go in and, and edit each of those individually. So now that we're in run mode in the PLC and the AOI is in here, we've specified the path, 
Uh, now we hover over the status here at the bottom, and you can see that the value in the middle of those, all those uh, lines there, the value is equal to 1, which means the connection status to the ENET meter is good or healthy. So we're talking to it, we're exchanging messages with it. So now the next step would be to go under the controller tags here at the top of the view window here and go under the ENET meter controller tag and then go under the uh, diagnostic update and under here you'll notice that the traffic data, sorry, traffic data uh, bit or, or um, sorry, d um, bool, I guess, yeah, so bit is actually set. So what that means is that it's always going to be, and that's by default set, uh, it's always going to be monitoring the traffic. And the reason for that is, is that's used to then understand whether the, uh, which devices on the network are actually active and which ones are not, so we know which ones to request data of. And so you should never disable that or set that to zero. It should always stay as one. The other ones in this table here uh, are, are settable, and that's what, where you select what data you want to see showing up in the PLC, back in the controller tags. So we're going to set the power data to a one. And so now the power data will uh, start to be read from the ENIT meter. And then we'll also read the uh, signal data. The health data is the data, so the power, so there's the power data, power health data, and, and uh, so on for all of the rest of them. The health is the count of how many times, excuse me, a warning or a, a fault has been exceeded. And then that gets recorded in the health data. So at this point in time, I'm only interested in seeing the actual data itself. So uh, so we'll just leave it at that. So the power data and the health data, or sorry, and the signal data is what we're going to be looking at. So now we're just going to expand the actual diagnostic data, and then we're going to expand the diagnostic data power data. And then I'm going to want to look at the just the it's just the power itself. So I'm going to expand that out again, and then we're going to see the actual voltage levels. So uh, in this case, once again, we only have the Netalix light running, so I can't go back and look there to compare to see that it's reading uh, the expected value. However, you can see that it is giving us the average or live value, uh, the minimum value, and the maximum value. So. Uh, and the same thing exists for all of these. So say for shield for, shield, for instance, so we're seeing an average of 2 volts, a maximum of 2.46, and then a minimum of 1.7. So typically what that would mean there is that the grounding on the network has not been installed. And in this case, uh, that is the situation on my network here. So ideally, you'd like to see if you're testing with the unit meter close to the grounding point, you would see 0 volts. Or very close to it. And that's it. So uh, to get the AOI set up is very easy. Uh, you get to choose what data you want to see. And once again, if you want to uh, not have it execute uh, continuously, so the way it works now, if it's in the main task, is that once it's done, it will then, once as soon as it's finished, it, it will, it'll send the messages again. Just keep sending those. So it's sending them very quickly, and that may be more often than you want to, to set those or send those. One thing that I would like to show you here about the um, about the triggers here is that uh, there are different triggers that you can do here. Uh, you can put the ENET meter online, offline. Uh, you can reset the ENET meter. You can reset the power loss event. The power loss event being data that gets stored at the time of power down. So as it's powering down, it stores the data away, and then you can then uh, retrieve that at a later date. Uh, but this would be to reset that. And the main one that I want to show you here is this uh, reset signal table min max after read. So what it does is if you set this bit uh, on the next read, it will then read the data 
and reset that. So the power of that or the value of that is allowing you to uh, not um, be have a min, have a min value or a max value that it was very high when you first plugged the unit meter in, but then never exceeds it after that. But it may come very close to it, and if you're trying to plot the data over time, then you won't see that. So if you reset the data after reading it, and you're reading it say every one minute, then uh, for every minute you'll see okay, well, what was the max value in, in the last minute? Um, you know, and then so on as you as you continue on sampling the data and storing it away in some sort of data historian. And that's pretty much it. If you have any questions, feel free to call our tech support. And my name is Ron. Have a good day. Bye for now.